Hi, my name is Jasmine, and this is Rosie, a nut survivor. She's one year and well, yeah, she's a year and five months. Um, she was born at 24 weeks. She's my third baby. Um, I was having a normal pregnancy with her, um, up to 22 weeks when I started having a lot of discharge with her. Um, I ended up going to a regular checkup when they noticed I was already three centimeters dilated with her. Um, they sent me to get an emergency surgery at the hospital. We live in Salinas, California, so we were sent to Memorial Hospital. We got an emergency surgery done at 22 weeks, three days. And, um, you know, that emergency surgery helped me keep her in for two more weeks. At 24 weeks, I started having, uh, more discharge, bloody discharge. I ended up going to Memorial again, to the hospital. And from there, they checked my cervix and I was dilated again, three centimeters. Uh, the bag was actually already popping down where I was dilated. So they transferred me to Stanford. We got to Stanford. They started monitoring me. They started checking me. Um, you know, with her, she was healthy. There was no, no issues with her. Um, we got there, they did what they had to do, um, this NICU nurse came and he was speaking to us about what the ah! possibility, sorry, like I was saying, the possibilities of her being so premature, born, born so premature, Down syndrome, um, brain bleeds, um, a lot of things, but they did not mention it. Um, you know, when he was explaining to us all of that, you know, I told my husband, you know, like, she, she'll be okay, like, you know, she's not going to be born yet, you know, um, but no, that same night I started having contractions, and I had an emergency C-section with her, uh, she was still in a sitting position, she wasn't, um, you know, the position where she should be, head down, she was just 20, 24 weeks, um, I got my C-section, and I delivered her and she was uh, born and then she had passed away so they resuscitated her. I don't know if that's the word you say but they brought her back to life. Um, they just took on, took, took on with her, took her out of the room uh, to another room to get intubated, to, to do everything as much as possible to, you know, everything to keep her alive. Um, I didn't get to see her until the next day. At night, um, the first day that she was born, she was she she got donated breast milk. The second day, she started getting my milk. Um, you know, I remember with the first the, that same day I went to go see her. The first day, they the nurse had told me, you know, the first week is always the the honeymoon for them, and it was. Uh, she was born July thirteen weighing one pound 12 ounces um <laughs> on july 22nd i remember taking her in breast milk at three four in the morning around there in between that time you know i still touch her fingers and she looked fine um two hours later i get a call they, they told me you know your daughter is very very sick um her tummy was swollen they had gotten big. Um, very bad it was. Um, you know, when we got in there, the doctor told us, you know, hey, you know, your daughter is very, very sick. You need to come. We were staying out in a room right next to the NICU. Um, so we just got up, changed, you know, went in there, washed our hands, put our head nets to go see what was going on. They did tell us that she was very, very sick. You know, they made a sign. They, they, they wanted us to sign for her to get her pick line. She got it in this towel right here. Um, and they put her on a ventilator where the ventilator did all her breathing. Uh, she, it seemed like she was unconscious at that time because the machine was just shaking her. Hey. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry.
So the ventilator was doing all the breathing for her. Um, you know, they had told us she was very, very sick. We baptized her on July 22nd. Um, two days after that, July 24th, um, late that afternoon, the doctor had told us, hey, you know, like, Rosie has neck uh, surgery. should be giving you a call later on today. So why was I like, oh, okay. Um, so then I waited for the call. It never happened, but we were there. Um, they would go check up on her every morning. Surgery would stop by and do all, everything. On Sunday, which was July 26th, we, we we went to see her and we told, you know, we were waiting for rounds and, you know, we, we asked, you know, is surgery going to be needed? They told us no. So then we're like, okay, we need to go see our kids because we were staying full the whole time over there due to her being over there. Uh, I felt she needed us more at that moment. My mom was taking care of my other two kids over here. She, My daughter's five and two. Um, so... I, right now, but they were smaller last year, a year. Um, you know, so we're like, okay, you know, if everything is okay, we're going to go visit our kids and we'll be here tomorrow. That was the plan. Um, we live an hour away from Stanford. She was born in Stanford. We live in Salinas. So we drove back and not even two minutes when we were walking in my mom's house to see the kids, I get the call from surgeon surgery telling us they needed to take her into surgery um that they had found something very unnormal unnormal on her x-ray and she needed surgery so i did all the consent by phone they took her in i waited for their call which i didn't get um you know i was just so uncomfortable so i was uncomfortable so you know i was very worried so I decided to take off and drive over there again. Bless you. When I was walking to the NICU, I heard the surgeon. The, she was sitting down with another surgeon, I believe. And I heard her tell him, you know, I didn't expect to see what I was, what we saw. So then I turn around and, I, and I'm like, hey, you know, how did surgery go? And she, her answer was, oh, like, has the doctor spoken to you? I was like, no, I've been trying to call and I, I can't. I haven't gotten an answer for her. So, okay, she's like, oh, I'll give him a call. So I continued my way in. Um, when I walked in the NICU and seen Rosie in her little, in her little thing, uh, she looked white. Like if she was white, white, pale, pale white. Um, the only different, you know, I... She looked like she was dead, to be honest. The only difference was that she was warm. You know, it was very hard to see her like that. The doctor got there. He met me there. He took me out and he explained to me what had happened. He had explained to me that they had removed a lot of intestines from Rosie. They left her with, uh, I believe, Five, seven centimeters of large intestine. Two of those seven centimeters were very, very bad. But they said they still left it in there. And uh, two centimeters of small. That was the the numbers they gave me that she was left with. So yeah, she. That, those were the numbers they told me they had left her. They had left her with. Um, when she, he told me that, I cried. My question to him was like, is my daughter going to be able to live? Is she going to be able to go home? You know, they, you know, like I, at that time, you know, I did not know really what he meant. You know, they told me, he told me there's kids that have a normal life, TPN, um, you know, but in reality, we don't know yet because she still has sepsis. She's very, very sick. Even after they had removed her her intestines that were damaged, they told me, you know, she's still very, very sick. Uh, a week after her surgery, um, they scheduled us an appointment to see if we still wanted to keep on going with the cares for her. 
um, or if we wanted to stop the cares and let her go. Um, you know, it, it was hard. Our questions as parents were like, you know, is she, is she suffering? Is she in pain? Will she make it? And they told us we don't know. We don't know. She was born on July 13th and up to November. That's when we started getting answers. When we would ask her, you know, like, when are we going to go home? We don't know. You got to take it day by day. Those, those months, those months were horrible. Horrible. When I would come home to visit my kids, because we weren't officially home. We were staying over there most of the time. I didn't even want to come to her to the room where the kids sleep because her clothes was there. And then my mind was like, is she ever going to be able to wear them? Is she ever going to be able to come home? Is she going to come home? It was hard. Um, her belly rubbing was sky high. Her skin, as you can see, she, you know, her eyes, look, they're white. At that time, they were yellow. Her skin was yellow. She was very jaundiced. Um, her belly ribbon was sky high. We wouldn't get a number at times. Um, her liver and signs were sky high as well. Um, on November 9th, uh, I noticed that she had a cyst right here. It kind of grew and they took, a, took out four ounces of, um, I believe it was pus. Um, they said it was like a cyst. Um, prior to those dates, they had told us, you know, we don't plan on doing surgery on her. Um, she, she got a colostomy bag when she, when they had removed her into her, um, bad intestines, which was July, July 26th. That's when, when she got a colostomy bag, we learned to change a colostomy bag. Cause you know, our plan was like, you know, if she comes home with a colostomy bag, you know, we need to learn it. We want her home. So we learned to do that. Um, prior to that surgery that I'm saying with the cyst, we were told, you know, we don't plan on doing surgery. You know, her billy ribbon is sky high. You know, if, if, if we were to take her to a, to the, to the surgery room, you know, like we could have a lot of complications due to her, her, her liver, um, due to sepsis, she did get a scar on her liver. Um, She's at high. They said something about cirrhosis that she was, she was, um, she could get cirrhosis, which with that scar, we don't know what could happen in five, ten years. You know, that's what the doctor recently told us. But so far, she's been doing good. After they did the, the cyst surgery, uh, a week later, they decided to do the colostomy reversal. At that time, she got her G-tube as well. Um, at the time of the colostomy reversal, they measured um, 10 large, 10 centimeters large, and 15 small, and she had one third of her colon left. Um, this happened on November 16th, that I remember. Um, so, you know, there she, she was, she took a week, a week intubated, Due to that surgery, um, hey, we moved to the ICN after her, her, um, after she got better, after she healed, um, you know, and on December 23rd, they decided to, to get her on her TPN. What? They decided to give her her central line. She does have a central line. Um, she does have a central line, so, um, and a G-tube still. We only use it for meds. At the time when we got moved to PCU, which is with GI, um, give me a second. There, so, um, at the time, when we went to PCU, she still has her, uh, her liver and signs sky high. Um, they started going down slowly, but it was because she was started to eat. She wouldn't eat a lot. 
it was we started her off at two mls two mls and um two by twos uh there was a time where she only tolerated 10 centimeters and we went back down to like five um it took us a while to go up when we got discharged um her liver's numbers were still a little high she was still jaundiced she had yellow in her eyes still um we got discharged uh february 16. she was only getting 22 mls five times a day she was getting that that amount and we stayed seven months in the hospital up in stanford uh, we were having a lot of issues with her glucose. She couldn't hold her glucose. Um, sorry, her TPN uh, machine was beeping right now. Anyways, um, she couldn't keep her sugars up when she was off. Uh, when we came home, we came home at 22 week, 22 hours. Sorry, 22 hours on TPN. She wasn't able to keep her sugars a lot up. That will that hold. We got moved to a PCU like in December, beginning of December. Uh, we were supposed to get discharged before Christmas, which that didn't happen because she couldn't keep her sugars high in a in a good like in the 60s, I believe. That's where they wanted her 60s, 70s. <sighs> it took us a long time because she just couldn't. And there was an occasion when her when her glucose got as low as 20 she never shown signs she was always normal like she was happy she was normal everything um so it took us time to wean her off currently we are on gaddix once a day shot she takes ursodile for her liver she's on 12 hours on tpn she's able to keep her her sugars up now um, she's 15 pounds, 13 ounces currently. We've been struggling with her weight since April. Uh, we've been at 14, 15, no more than that. So I'm hoping, you know, to go up there. Uh, last week we were in hospital for a line infection. We just got out on Thursday. So it's been kind of, you know hard but first line infection she got her line december 23rd of last year and she she's only had one line infection we're not hoping for no more we want to be infect line infection free um with her feet now she's taking five to six bottles of four ounces and oh my god is she an eater we were told that you know she wasn't going to be able to eat for a very very long time and no she's been eating by mouth um, her her bilirubin right now it's normal range lower than 0 0.2 on her blood work um, she's been doing spectacular uh, we've been taking her to physical therapy she has no brain bleeds she started crawling three weeks ago so yay for that but you know neck I'm barely we're barely starting we barely learned what it really was during while well, we were going through all of these stuff where we were almost losing our daughter because my daughter was dying on July 22nd because of neck. We didn't know what it was. Throughout July and November, there was no day I would exit the hospital crying. How can someone tell you, we don't know if your daughter's going home? take it day by day how how can a parent go home after hearing that you know now that I have more access to it more reading to it now I know why they told me take it day by day we don't know neck just could have taken my daughter even after surgery you know, I just, in the reality, I'm not going to lie, the first time they took her into surgery, when when they removed all of the bad stuff, I thought, you know, she'll be fine. 
No. It took me days to understand, you know, the amount that they took out of her, how it would affect her. She has no ICB, which it's a big thing in, on the long run because that's the part that serves sugary sugars. She doesn't have that part. So we do see what she eats. She drinks Pedialyte, so she gets her five to six bottles of four ounce bottles, and she'll get like two extra ones with Pedialyte, which she'll take down. Oh, but um, she can't see her brothers eating candy or stuff because oh my god, she gets so she wants it. So we do give her try little tries, but we try not to give her large amounts. But like I said, um, you know, neck. Neck did change our lives, you know, and I'm thankful for the doctors that have been helping my daughter, and they still do. They're great doctors, um, you know, and people need to get educated about this because sometimes for me and my husband, Neck just slapped us in the face with our daughter, and I, I'm thankful. Yeah. That I have her. I'm thankful that I'm have her, and you know. I'm thankful that I have her and you know seven months being in the hospital it was hard also being away from our kids and trying to better Rosie and my Rosie right now like I said she's a year and five months she's doing fantastic and I hope she continues doing that as of now you know my fear is as she grows you know what kind of life is she gonna have you know uh, right now she's doing great like I said you know but I want to know a little bit more you know I'm just curious you know what to expect with her she does have blowouts you know that's something I'm just curious about you know as she grows will she be able to control those you know uh, she'll have like stools she'll have like two two or three throughout the day that's about it um but still you know it's just she still has that small amount uh the last x-ray that they took with they they made her drink something like dye or some the contrast dye i believe that it is they did say that it looked like she had more intestine but they couldn't get an actual estimate about them unless they they would go in there and measure but i mean there's no need for that so it's like no you know with us knowing that she's eating more and absorbing it that means that she's growing intestines. Her doctor, Dr. Dunn, fantastic doctor. I'm very grateful that, you know, he did what he did with my Rosie. He helped her the best way that he could. I really, you know, I'm thankful to him. He did mention that she wouldn't, um, she wouldn't need no more surgeries other unless she had issues. At the time of her surgery, I forgot to mention, they removed her gallbladder and her appendix. Um, at the On July 22nd, when, no, sorry, uh, November, uh, November 16, when they did the colostomy reversal, they removed her appendix and her gallbladder. Yeah, her gallbladder. Um, he had told me that they had found, um, stones already in there. So he just removed them just to, for her not to have more complications in the future. And, um, he mentioned, oh, sorry. Um, he mentioned that the intestines didn't stop growing, I guess, until the age of 10. So there's still hope. So it's like, we know she's going to grow intestines, but out of the 10 centimeters, and 15 small centimeters that she had, we don't know how much it's going to grow. But they're definitely going to grow. I just hope they grow enough for her not to have a lot of complications. Um, well, this is my story. Our story. Rosie's already sleeping. Um, but she's my little miracle baby. 24-weeker neck survivor. Um, and I think this is very good that you guys are offering you know people to share their stories because in reality there's a lot a lot i've seen a lot of families have that have lost their babies due to neck 